Welcome to another edition of Archaeological News. My headline story is about a rather interesting pyramidal structure recently discovered in Kazakhstan. For disclosure, there isn't tons of information on it, but I've put everything I can find into the video and will keep an eye out for further research on the site. Aside from that, I'm also talking about new research into the Gothic Circle in Germany, Neolithic family trees compiled from DNA analyses in France, an elaborate ancient burial in Jordan, and a new study into a Bronze Age meteorotic arrowhead. What more could you want? Let's get into it. Bronze Age Pyramidal Structure Discovered in Kazakhstan A team from the Eurasian National University recently uncovered a Bronze Age pyramid of sorts whilst working at the Kirigungir archaeological site in Toktamis, Kazakhstan. Kirigungir is made up of burial mounds dating to the Hun and Saka period, so roughly from the 2nd century BCE to the 6th century CE. However, it now appears the site was in use much earlier. The high-precision pyramidal structure has a hexagonal base consisting of sides measuring 12.8 meters in length. Each of these six walls has eight courses of stones. There are circular features in its center, so presumably the pyramid formed an enclosure to these circular buildings, rather than being a traditional pyramidal structure which closes off and culminates in a peak. Its walls are decorated with animals, mostly horses. Horse bones have also been excavated in the vicinity of the pyramid. This has led experts to suggest the structure may have been the centre of a horse cult. Ceramics, gold earrings and other jewellery were also excavated from the site. So it would appear that this was a ceremonial centre some 4,000 years ago. We know that horses and horse cults were important in this region at the time. So the imagery and bones make sense. However, the structure itself is somewhat unique. I noticed that there appears to be some large megalithic blocks of stone there as well, on three of the corners. They are a different kind of stone to the courses of smaller blocks, so I wonder what their significance was. I can't find many details on it or what the experts think it would have looked like originally, like how high the walls may have been, for example, but it's definitely an intriguing and unusual site. At this point, only a press release has been issued, but hopefully the research will be published in future. New research provides further insights into the Neolithic Gossek circle in Germany. During the Middle Neolithic, more than 150 circular complexes were built by the inhabitants of Central and Eastern Europe. Consisting of ditches and palisades, these sites vary in diameter between 40 and 250 metres. As with many Neolithic structures, it's not known with any certainty what their function was. However, a number of hypotheses have been put forward by experts. A recent article by Dr. Norma Henkel reanalyzes the site at Gossek in Saxony-Anhalt, Germany. Built between 4900 and 4600 BCE, the Gossek complex was first discovered during an aerial survey in 1991. A series of excavations followed before the site was rebuilt and opened to the public. The Gossek Circle consists of a circular ditch with a 75 metre diameter enclosed by two concentric wooden palisade rings. Animal bones and pottery were found in pits inside and outside the circle, which led experts to suggest a ritual function for the complex, especially since the skulls and horn cores of cattle were disproportionately represented there, which is similar to that found at ceremonial sites from the same period across Europe. Access to the circle was via three entrances, one in the north, one in the southeast, and one in the southwest. One pit stood out as particularly interesting. Measuring 1.6 by 1.3 meters, evidence of burning was found on its sides, and it contained partial skeletal remains of an adult human. In another pit, the remains of the right hand of a juvenile male were found. The southeast and southwest entrances correspond with astronomical alignments, indicating that it was probably used to observe the winter and summer solstices as well as the spring equinox. What I personally find fascinating is that no matter whether we are talking about megalithic stone monuments, henges or ditch and palisade arrangements, there was a clear trend in the Neolithic towards large circular ceremonial centres that appear to have been connected to both ritual feasting and astronomy. 
There are thousands of such structures across Europe, over thousands of kilometers. There had to have been some sort of a connection between the groups and cultures that created them. But aside from the obvious similarities between the structures, I don't think there's much evidence for cultural exchange or long distance trade in that period. Let me know what you think in the comments. Neolithic family trees reconstructed using DNA from a burial site in France. Researchers in France have created two family trees from the Neolithic burial site of Gurgi in the Paris Basin by extracting and analysing DNA. Gurgi dates back to 4700 BCE and was excavated during the mid-2000s. It was a simple burial ground with no monuments, megalithic or otherwise, and no grave goods. However, advances in science and technology since these excavations were carried out have made DNA extraction from the majority of the skeletal remains possible, giving archaeologists new insights into the social organization of Neolithic communities in France. The research team analyzed the genomes of 94 of the 128 individuals that had been excavated from the burial site and published the results in the journal Nature. Mitochondrial DNA, Y chromosome data and the age and the sex of each individual were analysed. In the first tree, the research team found a patrilineal pattern with seven generations featuring 64 people all descended from one male. In the second tree, they found a patrilineal line consisting of 12 people in five generations. These trees indicate that women left the community where they were born with men staying behind. The only women buried at Gurji were not related. Inbreeding was also not a feature of these groups, probably because of women moving outside of the communities. No half-siblings were found, which suggests that families were monogamous. This is interesting because there have been quite a few DNA studies of Neolithic burial sites over the past few years, and their insights into social organisation tend to vary quite considerably. I've mentioned these in a number of videos, which I'll link below. I remember there was one in Ireland and one in Malta which showed some aspect of inbreeding in the Neolithic. There was another in England which suggested polygamy. So I guess Practices probably varied from region to region and group to group. As with all DNA studies, the paper is complex and includes lots of data and charts. So if this is a subject that interests you, the article is open access and detailed in the description below. Neolithic necklace discovered in Jordan suggests a sophisticated society. In 2018, an interesting grave was excavated in the Neolithic village at Baya, Jordan, which dates to between 7400 and 6800 BCE. Within the grave, the remains of an eight-year-old child were found, along with more than 2,500 beads, a perforated stone pendant, and a pearl ring. The placement of these items indicates that they originally made up one intricate ornament, which had disintegrated over time. A recent paper published in the journal PLOS One analysed features of this ornament to see what cultural significance it may have had, and what insights it can give us into the Neolithic community that created it. Baya is an important archaeological site in the Great Petra area of southern Jordan, which would have been accessible only by climbing a steep gorge. Excavations have shown that the settlement was made up of domestic dwellings with some of the dead being buried underneath these houses. Archaeologists have found singular, double and collective burials in this context. It's also notable that few grave goods have been found in adult burials there. It's likely that the majority of the dead were buried outside the village and only specific individuals were chosen for these house graves. The cyst grave where the skeleton and beads were found was underneath the floor of a room which has been labelled as CR 36.1. These beads varied in type, size and colour, but the researchers were able to conclude that they had formed a multi-row necklace that was created locally within the settlement. Some of the beads included fossil amber, exotic shells, calcite, hematite and turquoise, a level of sophistication not previously found for this time period and location. The research has enabled the reconstruction of the necklace which is on display at the Petra Museum in southern Jordan. Several aspects of the burial suggest that the eight-year-old had a high social status. The carefully constructed cyst structure, the way the child was laid out and the elaborate necklace. Such an ornament has not been found in any other graves at the settlement. It's likely that the funerary ritual was a public event with the necklace having been created purposefully for it. The uniqueness of the burial in the Levant during the late pre-pottery Neolithic B certainly indicates the importance of this child and also highlights the complexity of a society that was able to create such an extravagant ornament, including both locally sourced and imported materials. 
New analysis reveals Bronze Age arrowhead was made from meteoritic iron. A recent paper published in the Journal of Archaeological Science outlines the results of research into a Bronze Age arrowhead discovered in Switzerland in the 1800s. For many years, the arrowhead was kept at the Bern Historical Museum and was thought to be similar to other hunting weapons of that period. However, X-ray tomography and gamma spectrometry have revealed that the arrowhead was created from a meteorite. It was found to contain aluminium-26 isotopes, iron and nickel alloy. At first, it was thought the source meteorite must be the one that crashed to Earth 170,000 years ago at Twanberg, since it is less than 8 kilometers from Murigan, where the arrowhead was discovered. However, the research team found that it had actually come from the Kalijav meteorite in Estonia that crashed 3,500 years ago. That's around 2,250 kilometers away from Murigan. This is yet another example of long-distance trade in the Bronze Age. So far, only 55 arrowheads fashioned from meteorotic iron have been found in Eurasia and Africa, and 19 of these were excavated from Tutankhamun's tomb. A meteorotic dagger was also found in his tomb. I did a video on that. I find the interconnectivity in the Bronze Age incredible. It's amazing how much communication there was between cultures that were hundreds or even thousands of kilometers apart, especially since the Bronze Age wasn't the most peaceful time. Many settlements were fortified to some extent and weapons were more of a feature of that time period than the Neolithic, but trade and cultural exchange were still prevalent across large geographic areas. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you don't already. Thank you to my patrons and channel members. Information on supporting me through either Patreon or YouTube is detailed in the description below. See you next time.